Welcome to Extreme Reloading. In this episode, we're going to be comparing Vargat and RL15. Now in our past episodes, we've been working up a load for the Ruger Precision Rifle in 308 Winchester. And I started that using Vargat. But after looking at some of my groups, I really wasn't uh, too impressed with the groups that I was getting, five shot or even three shot groups. But all that effort is not lost. What we've accomplished so far is we've prepared some extremely consistent brass. If you'd like to look at some of the techniques that we've used and some of the tips that I've imparted, take a look at some of our past extreme reloading videos from this season. In the previous episode where we saw some okay groups from Varget, we also saw or I talked about some kind of outlandish velocities that I was getting um, on that load. Well, as it turns out, I found out that my chronograph had some malfunctions. So what I've done is I've been working with Ehler Research, the manufacturers of the Ehler 33 that I have and now the Ehler 35P. Um, and I have a brand new set of sky screens that uh, I'm using. In fact, I was just out with that setup chronographing loads on both Varget and RL15, and the results are much closer to what one would expect. A couple of other very important lessons learned. Number one, I found out that, you know, I can shoot from the prone position just about as well as I can from the bench rest. I mean, if I compare my five shot groups or my three shot groups, you know, I'm pretty much there in both cases, they're very, very comparable results. The other important lesson learned is that when we talk about an overall error budget for the accuracy of a given rifle, or rather the precision of a given rifle, I think that a large part of that error budget is the shooter. And what it really all comes down to is that last moment when you're squeezing that trigger. So many things can go wrong at that instant that'll make a shot go awry this way or that way or up or down or whatever. So one of the things that I've done is I've videotaped myself shooting from both the prone position as well as off the bench. Now, even if you're shooting off the bench, there's still plenty of room for a person to mess up the shot by yanking the trigger or something like that. And that normally comes about when a person has maybe a little bit of a flinch especially as you get into these uh, higher powered uh, rifles, uh, maybe something like the 338 Win Mag, 416 Rigby, those sort of things. But people are more or less sensitive to other types of, uh, other types of guns. So uh, I took that video and I slowed it down tremendously and uh, I call this rock steady. Let's take a look. Now, regarding my testing with Varget and RL15, the first thing that I did, of course, is I worked up my load with RL15. And what I ended up with was 44 grains of RL15. So to test these two, I loaded up a couple boxes of ammo with 44 grains of Varget and 44 grains of RL15. All of those rounds were using the 168 grain tip Sierra Match King. And I fired these at 100 yards, 200 yards, and 350 yards. 350 yard group was fired from the prone position. And I measured the three shot and the five shot groups in most of those cases. Now here's what I got. For Varget, my three shot group was 0.66, two thirds of an MOA at 100 yards. At 200 yards, 
essentially one MOA. And at 350 yards, 1.46, or almost one and a half MOA. RL15 was 0.55, essentially half MOA at 100 yards, three quarters of an MOA at 200 yards, and 1.40 MOA at 350 yards. Muzzle velocities were pretty comparable. RL15 gave me a standard deviation of 13 feet per second on an average of 2,596 feet per second at the muzzle, while Varget gave me a standard deviation of 15 feet per second, 2,613 feet per second at the muzzle on average. Now RL15 says that it is consistent at all temperatures. Uh, it doesn't say it's a temperature compensated powder, but you know, I'm not going to worry about that. What I'm going to worry about is driving those groups as small as possible and the effect of ambient temperature on my muzzle velocity is really a pretty easy one to take care of. What I do I will calculate trajectories under a host of different temperature regimes. And then on a given day, if it's 60 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm going to use my trajectory calculations for 60 degrees. If it's 20 degrees, I use that column. And in fact, I put a very useful link in the comments that'll help you figure this stuff out for yourself as well. So which one should I go with? RL15 or Varget? You know, what we're seeing at this point in the game, we're looking at trying to reduce those group sizes as much as possible. And a tenth of an MOA or a couple tenths of an MOA is really a big deal. And what we're seeing is that consistently, I'm getting better groups with RL15 than I am with Varget. That's kind of what was happening when I reloaded the, uh, when I worked up my load for the 243 Winchester. I got pretty good results with Varget, but I got much better results with Hodgdon 4350. In this case, on the 308 Winchester for the Ruger Precision Rifle, I'm getting pretty good results from Varget, okay results from Varget, but getting better results with RL15. Now the next step in our process is to deal with combined overall length. And I'm going to be experimenting with seating the bullets as far out as I possibly can and still go into the magazine, all the way down to precisely 2.800 inch combined overall length. So there we have it, kind of a head-to-head -head competition between Varget and RL15. And while it doesn't show one is so much better than the other, right now I'm kind of leaning toward uh, using changing over to RL15 for this rifle in this load. Thanks for watching Extreme Reloading. Hey, we got more stuff coming up. So subscribe and uh, watch for our newest stuff coming out in the next couple weeks.